So, so if you were such a big Kane fan, how come you went to uh, went to Duke for your undergraduate? I couldn't get into Miami. No, I'm kidding. I, I uh, <laughs> you know, part of me I wanted to get away from home, not because I didn't love my home. I absolutely love my home, but I just wanted the experience of being able to live away from home. I also have a long family history at Duke. My grandfather went there. Uh, my uncle went there. I have several cousins who went there. Um, through my mom's side of the family. So uh, I always was a big Duke fan growing up too. It was Miami and Duke were my two big. I, I liked Miami for football and baseball and Duke for basketball. I kind of cheated. I picked the best of both worlds on that one. Um, but, you know, it was uh, at the time they weren't both in the ACC, so it wasn't hard. I never had to watch them play each other and figure out who they were. Right. Um, and I had a great experience at Duke. I loved Duke. It was such an awesome place. And I, I got to come home to Miami where my sister went to college. So um, lots of family history on both. What, what did you major in at Duke? And then what was your path from Duke to uh, DraftKings? I had a double major in economics and computer science. I had a minor in math, which was actually quite easy because, you know, all, I think all but like one or two courses that I would have had to take for the math minor. I already had to take for the econ and comp side double major. Uh, and then, you know, after I graduated, I graduated at an interesting time. I started college in the late nineties. It was the height of the tech boom, the original tech boom. And, um, you know, there were these companies. I remember going to the first career fair that, uh, you know, I, I, I had since I went to school a career fair at Duke and seeing, you know, all these tech companies that had raised hundreds of millions of dollars on these you know, crazy ideas. And I, I, I really got excited about it. And um, I called my father and I said, you know what, I want to drop out and move to Bay Area and become a Silicon Valley entrepreneur. And he you know, put the fear of God in me and said, you, you know, you're crazy if you do that. You're going to ruin your life. I'll cut you off. Like anything you could possibly say to talk you out of it. And ended up being really a good thing because about, you know, 12 months later, the bubble burst. And, you know, I went, I remember going to the career fair the following year and gone were all these internet companies. It was all banks and consulting firms and, you know, the like. So uh, it was good. He, uh, he gave me good advice. I don't think he necessarily knew the tech bubble was going to burst, but he did know the value of getting a great college education. And that was something that my parents always instilled in me, the importance of education. So, um, you know, I stuck it out. I finished up at Duke. And then after Duke, I still kind of had the entrepreneurial bug, but we were kind of, you know, we we're still in an environment where it was kind of tough to, to start a new tech company. So I went to work for a company called Capital One, which you know, was a really a fantastic experience, great company. I learned a ton uh, and I got all excited uh, after several years there. I learned a lot. I met one of my eventual co-founders, Matt. We were all excited. We were going to go start a business and in 2008. So once again, I had terrible timing. Um, 2008, of course, after the banking crisis, the mortgage crisis, there was no capital coming into startups. And so uh, I decided, okay, I'm going to go try something else for a little bit. So I went to a company called Vistaprint at the time. It's now called Simpress. And, um, you know, after uh, going to there, I, I was really happy. Again, it was very fortunate for me that it worked out that way because, um, you know, I really didn't know what I didn't know. And I ended up learning a ton about the internet. I met my third co-founder, so second co-founder, three of us, Paul. Uh, I recruited Matt over there. And then a few years later, the three of us started to get the bug again. And um, we decided this time we're really going to do it. We didn't have the excuse of a bad economy or anything like that. Only problem is we didn't have an idea. So we used to go out, um, you know, after work for dinner or drinks and throw around ideas. We must have thrown around, you know, dozens and dozens of them, nothing stuck. And then one day my co-founder, Matt, sat me down after work and he said, I got an idea. And I said, what is it? And he said, you know, basically he described to me the, the high level uh, essence of what DraftKings fantasy sports was. And it took me about two minutes to say, I think this is the one. I think this is it. I, I, I was like, am I missing something? Um, and it, the thing for me is I was a big fan of fantasy sports and sports in general. So my first instinct was, am I thinking this is too good just because it hits home for me and it's something that I would like? Um, but then I went home that night and I, I researched it and I, I did a bunch of um, you know work. I found there were actually others doing similar concepts, which at first you know, kind of freaked me out. I said, oh, we missed it. We weren't the first ones to do it. But what um, one of my mentors at the time told me, he said, uh, that's actually a good thing. 
you don't want to be the only one going at it. That shows that there's validation in the marketplace. It's also, you know, as things come up, you're not trying to build an industry all by yourself. You have others doing it. You just got to out execute and out compete everybody. Very important. Tell, tell us a little bit about Paul and Matt and what are, what are their strengths and weaknesses and what are yours and how do you complement each other as a, a team that's held together so well? Well, I think it starts with a huge amount of mutual respect for each other. Um, we all come from similar philosophical backgrounds. So I think it was really um, easy for us to get on the same page about how we wanted to start a business and what the philosophies of running a business would be. Uh, but we all had also a very diverse skill sets, so that was helpful too. And that's a, an interesting combination when you can get people that you all kind of bring things, different things to the table from a skill set perspective, but you're totally aligned on how you want to run the business, being technology oriented, using data to make decisions, investing in analytics. You know, those were things that we all, you know, really passionately believed in and were 100% on the same page on. And so, you know, the three of us really, I think, were, were a good fit from that standpoint. We didn't know what we were going to do for a while, but we knew that we shared very similar philosophies and brought different things to the table. Um, you know, Paul was the one who, who coded the initial website. Um, we all laugh now because the tech team had to rebuild a lot of what he did, but he was the one who was able to figure out how to hack it together and get it off the ground. And, um, you know, after the three of us worked for many, many nights and many uh, weekends working, you know, out of Paul's spare bedroom in Watertown, Massachusetts, uh, we finally decided we we're going to raise some money. We didn't know any idea what we we're doing. None of us had done anything like that before. We just went out and we figured it out. 